it is, guys. It's your boy Blasphemous HD. And as you guys well know, Happy Tree Friend holds near and dear to my heart. It is the perfect blend of scary and funny and scary in a weird blend that always makes me smile on the inside. You feel me? Watching people get decapitated and and drenched on. With that being said, you guys have sent me in the DMs of the Discord, the Happy Tree Friends Iceberg. Let's do this. I've seen a couple icebergs of the show online, but a lot of them used memes and fan theories instead of actual trivia. So I decided to make one myself, sticking to solely official material. I dug very deep for the trivia in this video, so my hope is that even if you're a big fan of the show, you'll learn at least big one fan. or two new things by the end. That's what's so, up. Without further ado, let's start with level one, the simplest trivia that the majority of fans will know of. Starting off with a very easy one, not for kids. Fun fact, this show isn't for kids. <laughs> a shocker, I know. Moving on, we have Flippy. Flippy is by far the most popular character in the series due to his nature of flipping out due to his PTSD and killing every other character. Having a character who is genuinely malicious is a big change to the formula of the show, and he's not used very often. That, combined with his over-the-top killing methods, makes him a very popular character, and 95% of fan art and a lot of the merch is based off of Flippy. And hey, if anything, I totally get it. Flippy killed a guy with a cookie and then ate it, and then he proceeded to wear the guy's skin in order to get his brother to jump into a hay bale grinder. Now that is exactly the type of stupid, over-the-top death that Happy Tree Friends is built off of. Because the show is entirely based around stupid, over-the-top deaths like this, Flippy providing some of the best ones is a surefire way for him to become the most popular character. Moving on, we have Kapow. Kapow was the short-lived spin-off series to Happy Tree Friends. It was mainly based off of giving origin stories for Flippy and Splendid, as well as finally giving Buddhist Monkey his own show after being rejected from the main show and delegated to just a DVD bonus feature. While Flippy's episode was well received, and most of the episodes were pretty good and the fans did like it, the show only made three episodes. A main reason for why Happy Tree Friends has gone on so many hiatuses is due to the budget, and Kapow tried to combat this using a Kickstarter. However, the Kickstarter failed to reach its goal, and although the show was never outright stated to be cancelled, the fact that nothing's been made in so long makes it pretty likely that the show is never coming back. Moving on, we have the TV series and TV airings. This is referring to the general fact that the show has aired on TV in various regions on various channels, mainly G4 in America with Comedy Central and MTV in some other regions. In 2006, the show got a dedicated TV season of 13 episodes consisting of three segments each, leading to, basically, 39 whole episodes. The last known airing of the show, from what I could find at least, is from 2019, when a now-defunct network aired various Mondo Media cartoons as a special. So, if you want to watch the show on TV now, you're kind of out of luck. But, I mean, who has cable today anyways? That's real! Flaky's Gender I ain't. The character of Flaky was initially designed by Rody Mondijo to be male. However, after Nika Lorber took over the role as Flaky, many fans and crew members thought Flaky was a girl. This led to a running joke where the crew and the fans really couldn't decide on whether That's Flaky was a, a boy or girl. At one point, the show even made fun of this debate with Flaky being unable to choose a bathroom, eventually choosing the men's room. Even after years of debate among the crew and the fans, Flaky's gender was never confirmed. They never ended up settling the debate, so it was eventually left up Flaky to viewer a girl. Not all girls have I agree with creator Ken, Ken Navarro to start in that ship. the gender of a character really doesn't matter, especially in a show like this. It's not a big deal. That's real. And not now that we big move on to level two. Slightly more obscure trivia, but most big fans of the show will probably know about these ones. Starting off, we have False Alarm. This is really the only major game release that Happy Tree Friends has ever had. Released by SEGA of all people on Steam and Xbox 360. The game is kind of like a 3D version of Lemmings, where you don't really control the characters, you control the environment, and you're trying to get them to the end safely. The game wasn't particularly popular when it came out due to its short length, poor AI, and just not being a super interesting take on the series. However, the episode made to promote the game is actually quite good and is well remembered. 
the episode was originally only viewable within the game by beating it, but now it's available to watch online for free. Only two years after the game's release, around 2010 or so, the game's Steam release was taken down and is no longer purchasable. Awesome. However, the Xbox 360 version was never delisted. So, you probably should get a copy now if you want one before the store closes. That's wow. Next up is Fallout Boy. The music video for Fallout Boy's The Carpal Tunnel of Love is an original Happy Tree Friends animation by Fat Cat, the same animators who worked on the TV series. It's notable for having the actual band represented as Happy Tree Friends characters than dying five seconds later. Sadly, unlike any of the other TV episodes, this was never released in HD, so that's a bit of a bummer, but it is still available to be watched. But other than that, there's really not too much to say about it. It's pretty good, so you should go watch it. Banjo Frenzy. Mm. This is the original like episode Banjo used to pitch the show to Mondo Media, and it's very clearly a pilot. It features a different art style and different characters, and despite only being 20 seconds long, it is perfectly representative oh, of what the show would turn out to oh. be. For a while, it was a DVD exclusive, but later was released online for free. Years later, the episode was actually referenced in the show in the episode Wrath of Khan, so it does get to live on in a sense. Vote or Die this was an event held in March of 2010 to decide whether Lammy or Truffles would be added to the show as a main character. The voting ended on April Fool's Day, where the winner was jokingly revealed to be Lumpy, with the actual results being revealed the following day. Truffles got over 70,000 votes, but ultimately lost to Lammy, who got over 100,000 votes. True to their word, Lammy was added to the show as a main character, while Truffles was demoted to mere cameos, with no real role ever made for him. Ironically, because the show went on hiatus not long after the event, Lammy only ended up having seven appearances in the show, while through cameos, Truffles had over 20, meaning that he was in more episodes than the actual winner of the contest. This is one of those things where it's cool as an event, but it's really kind of a bummer because instead of having two characters, we just got one. Like, seriously, why can't we have both? But anyhow, if more episodes are ever made, I hope that Lammy gets more to do as she's a fun character. Maybe we'll even get merch for her, I don't know. TV and internet DVDs. Throughout the 2000s, three volumes of internet episodes and four volumes of all the TV episodes were released for purchase in stores or online on the Happy Tree Friends website. First Blood is actually considered the main reason as to why the show got popular in the first place, as it really didn't do well online, but once the DVD came out and sold really well, that's when the show took off and made them want to continue it. Uh. The rabbit hole of these DVDs and their many different releases is enough that I'm probably going to do a whole separate video going over them, alongside some overseas releases, the bonus features, and all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned if that's the type of thing you might be interested in. Mascot Costume Used mainly at Comic-Con, a mascot costume of Cuddles was made to promote the show. It was also used to promote the Slap Happy mobile game, which I'll talk more about later. Of course, this is not to be confused with the actual retail Halloween costumes made for the show. And, uh, they're great. This costume is actually very similar to the Fun For All Cuddles plush, both in appearance and its ability to remove its hand, as well as its guts. Sadly, this costume hasn't been seen since it was viciously eaten by Alien Hominid, and this is why Cuddles was never seen in the show ever again. Curse you, Alien Hominid. You won't get away with this. Starting off level 3, we have the Video Bomb Contests. This was a series of two events hosted by Truffles, where fans would create and submit their own custom characters, and the ones that got the most likes would be awkwardly placed in the background of an episode, standing there... doing nothing. The first one was just making a simple character, but the second one was Halloween-themed, where you had to put your character in a costume. For example, the character I just showed is meant to be dressed up as Ryu from Street Fighter. Other submitted characters that didn't get first prize were posted to Mondo Media's website in a series of fake trading cards. Catastrophe. Next, we have Giggle's Mom. This is Giggle's mainly Mom. here to represent the fact that this show has a lot of instances of early installment weirdness. In one of the earliest episodes of the series, Helping Helps, you can see Giggle's Mom, and yep, that's just Giggle's, but taller. 
This is apparently the only quote-unquote adult character in Happy Tree Friends. I'm not really going to argue against this considering the ages of the characters change frequently, and despite the fact there are two characters who I would definitely call adults, but whatever, it's a dumb show with no lore, so it's really not a big deal. And keeping up with the theme of mothers, next we have Pop's wife. If you have a character whose entire purpose is to be a parent, it brings up the obvious question of who the other parent is, and this is a question that plagued the fans and the crew for quite a while. Many of the cast even gave their own personal opinions on what happened to Pop's wife on the DVD bonus feature Behind the Screams, alongside other frequently asked questions such as what is Flaky's gender. But unlike Flaky's gender, this actually has a definitive canon answer. It was confirmed both in the show and on Twitter by Ken Navarro that Pop's wife is canonically dead. Trust me, That's not this a wasn't gender. planned, but I just happen to have three segments in a row about characters who we no longer see. That's and not a this gender, leads us to scrapped characters. On the First Blood DVD, there's a little featurette called Oodles of Doodles. This shows off lots of concept art for the show, early designs for characters, as well as the key focus of this segment, scrapped characters that never made it to the show. Examples of these scrapped characters include Chargy, Penny, Pranky, Cookie, and they Cookie. just get weirder from there. Excuse if you want to watch this special feature and bunny, see all bunny. the characters with explanations from the creators, it's up on YouTube, so you can go watch it if you're interested. Next is voice recasts. One thing that's interesting to note about the voice actors for the show is that a lot of them weren't really actors outside of the show. They were basically just people around the building that they got to do a voice. Because of this, a lot of these actors would be replaced over time. In summary, Giggles, Petunia, and Cub were originally voiced by Dana Belbin, then they were voiced by Ellen Connell, and then Lori G for the last few seasons. Russell was originally voiced by Jeff Pioncolana, but then was replaced by Francis Carr. Lumpy and Splendid were originally voiced by Rhodey Mondijo, but then David Wynn took over the role when Rhodey left. Lifty and Shifty were originally voiced by Mark Jambruno, but were eventually replaced by Ken Navarro. I didn't even, even know they had these characters voices. have all been recast, it's not uncommon for archival clips from previous actors to be used in the show. For example, the following two clips are nearly 20 years apart. This is especially the case with Pop and Flippy. The voice actor for both of them, Aubrey Ankrum, left the show around 2005 and hasn't recorded any new lines since. This means that all appearances of Pop and Flippy since 2005 have been just archival footage as they didn't want to recast him. These characters have very distinct, unique voices that really help their personality, so I'm happy they didn't recast them. Interestingly, there's also instances of characters being temporarily voiced by other actors when the original actor was unavailable. For example, Warren Graff was unable to provide Handy's voice for a whole lot of love, leading to Handy being voiced by Ken Navarro in that episode, even though Ken usually only plays Cuddles. At the end of the day, these characters don't really talk, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, cool. And the reason they don't talk, MySpace. Remember MySpace? Yes. No? Well, various Happy Tree Friends characters actually had MySpace accounts. From these pages, we can learn such amazing facts such as Flippy likes tea and cucumber sandwiches, Nutty apparently does not want kids, He's a Libra, and apparently like me. Cuddles is allergic to carrots. Oh. Or, I guess he isn't? I think this is a good example of how you really shouldn't trust much of what the devs actually say about the show, because a lot of it is just jokes and they change their minds constantly. But the fact that this even existed in the first place is just too funny, and so of the time. I mean, how long has it been since you've last even thought about MySpace? 15 years? 20 years? Never? That's what I thought. Sadly, this would have to count as lost media, as some of these pages were not archived, so the pages for Giggles and Lumpy, I couldn't find any archives of, so I think they're just fully lost. The final stretch, level 6. And starting off level 6, we have Rocky. Remember how the show aired on G4 for a while? 
Well, in the G4 airing of the episode Hello Dolly, the title card was actually changed to feature a character called Rocky. Obviously, this character isn't real, he's not in the episode, and the rest of the episode is completely unchanged. They just wanted to do something funny, I guess, so they just added this to the episode. This has never been seen in any other version of this episode. It's not on any DVDs, it's not in any of the web releases. In fact, this wasn't even known about until, like those bumpers, it was found on a VHS recording. I want to know what the thought process of adding this character was. Was it just an inside joke? Did they want to mess with people? I have no idea, but what I do know is that this is really funny, and I really don't see many people talking about this, so I think this really does deserve to be this far down. Official R34 Okay, look, I know I said I wasn't going to add memes to this list, and the title is a bit hyperbolic, but this is official media, and it's just too funny for me to not talk about. In the episode Easy Comb, Easy Go, we can see that Disco Bear has a picture of himself on his wall. However, the picture is cropped at the waist and we don't get to see too much of it. On the official Fat Cat Blogspot page, the full picture was actually posted, revealing that... Yeah. The full image has more of the room visible, as well as more of Disco Bear visible. The original picture isn't really that explicit, but just to make sure that YouTube won't take this down, I added some additional censoring. If for whatever reason you want to see the original picture, I'll leave a link in the description. View at your own risk. Okay, as an apology for making you look at that, here's one of the coolest pieces of Happy Tree Friends trivia out there that I wish more people knew about, because it is super awesome. Burn After Reading Burn After Reading is a series of blog posts made by Ken Navarro. It shows off documents sent to the developers of False Alarm to help make the game as accurate to the show as possible, and this is so cool to read. It's basically a show style guide showing the thought processes and how the show is made, and this is the type of stuff they never really show in DVDs. If you want to go read this, I'll leave a link in the description, because this is one of the coolest pieces of behind-the-scenes material for the show ever released. It's genuinely fascinating and shows that this show while stupid, had a lot of work and thought put into it. So yeah, this one is just so cool. It's a shame more people aren't talking about this, but hey, that's why I made this iceberg. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I miss Happy Tree Friends. It's like one of my favorite internet cartoons, you know what I'm saying, aside from stuff that Film Kyle makes. Make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. It's your boy Blasphemous HD, Twisms.